Welcome back to I Love Painted Rocks. Today I'm going to teach you how to use a cool tissue transfer technique to put images onto rocks that you can trace with your paint pens if you don't have original drawing skills. Identify the image that you would like to put onto your rock. Keep in mind if you're using a copyrighted image from a book like this one, this is not a project you should be doing for profit like to sell. This is more of a personal use project. Get a thin piece of tracing paper or tissue paper, kind of like the kind you use in a gift bag. Place it over your image and then trace it with a sharp pencil. Once you're done tracing, move your book off to the side and then identify the rock you'd like to put the image on, making sure it's the right size for the rock. The next step, of course, is to go ahead and cut out your image. Doing this process, since I'm working with smaller tissues and things that are really delicate, I like to use a tiny pair of fine point scissors in order to get really precise cuts, especially if I need to cut into a small area. I'm leaving a small border around the outside of the image, but generally try not to leave too, too much behind. Once your image is cut out, it's time to do a base coat on the rock with your favorite multi-surface paint that likes to stick to rocks. I'm a big fan of folk art multi-surface. I'm using this pretty light blue color to give it a good base coat. It's important that this is spread really thin so it's not too sloppy, but it's still damp when we apply the image. Lay the image on top of the damp paint and then use a dry, soft paintbrush that doesn't have any water or paint on it to smooth out the image, pressing it down into the paint. This is the time that you need to work out any wrinkles that are in the tissue paper and make sure every single part of this tissue is stuck well to the rock so it's nice and smooth and flat. So take your time with this process if you need to. Once you've got the image adhered, you're gonna go over the edges between the edge of the cut tissue and the actual drawing with the background color for your rock. Now, if you used white for a background color, you can skip this step, but this is just to help cover up the faint outline that you'll still be able to see after you have adhered your image to the rock. Don't be afraid to switch paintbrushes if you need a really fine tip to get in and cover up some details. Once the edges are painted over, I like to take this chance to go back over and do a second base coat on the background color of the rock just to make sure it's nice and smooth and even. Set it aside to dry when you're done. Once your rock is dry, pick it up and put it on top of a paper plate. Get your Mod Podge Ultra Spray on Finish in matte, shake it really well, and then spray it to apply to your rock. You want to make sure the tissue is well saturated and then go ahead and set it aside until the Mod Podge is completely dry. Once the Mod Podge is dry, now it's time for the fun part. Go ahead and get out your paint pens. My favorite ones are these Posca pens and I will link to them in the description for the video. I like to start by using an extra fine tip black pen to go over the outline of everything that I traced earlier with my pencil. Once the outline is done, it's time to color. I like to use the extra fine tip pens even if I have to color kind of a big area because I really like the amount of control that I get and the really precise lines that I can get when following this technique. Go ahead and be creative, do whatever colors you want as you're filling in, making sure to give yourself some time for each of the layers of paint to dry before layering a new color on top of it. In this case, I started to add some accent marks around the feathers 
to indicate some shading that was mimicked in the source image. Now, because these pens have really opaque paint, of course, once I was done doing the brown and it dried and I colored over it with the buff, you couldn't see the brown anymore. But it did give me a chance to kind of see where I wanted to have accent marks. So once I color over it with the buff, I'm just gonna go back over it again with the brown. When I get close to things like eyes, I like to get as close as I can and then even overlapping the black that was originally there a little bit. And then once this buff color is dry, I'm gonna come back in with the black to re-add the eyes back in, just like I'm gonna come and re-add the brown accent marks from the wings and the body back in with the brown pen once the buff paint is dry. going to add the black dots back on top where they were for the eyes and then while I'm waiting for the rest of the buff paint to dry I'm going to do some jaggy lines to add a nice little nest around the base of my chicken. I'd kind of add some trace lines where I could see what was happening in the original photos but I wanted to have some kind of a base like a nest to help ground my image so my chicken wasn't just floating in space. To give the nest a little bit of a blendier effect, while the yellow nest paint is still wet, I'm going to go back and add brown accent marks to show where the hay is. Then I'm going to keep going with the brown and go back and add in the accent marks that I had kind of test drawn earlier onto my chicken. In this case, I'm going to add an additional shade of yellow over top of the nest to show some depth and dimension. Once I'm done with that, I'll get my ultra fine tip black pen and just go over the black line again in some places where the buff or the brown paint had spilled over onto the black line. Once your paint pens are dry, take your rock outside to seal it with a clear spray sealer to make it outdoor safe. I hope you enjoyed this fun rock painting technique. If you love painting rocks, please give this video a thumbs up, follow me on social media, and don't forget to subscribe to the I Love Painted Rocks channel.